As far as anyone can tell for now, everyone on Earth is only alive for a limited span of time. Even those who pad the impact of this truth with a belief in an afterlife can admit that as of now, humans have not yet found a way of cheating death, and if nothing else, our time on this mortal plane is finite. The traditional solution offered to anyone courageous enough to accept that limitation is carpe diem, seize the day. Live each day as if it was your last, because someday it will be. Most people can get on board with the carpe diem concept because it feels good, it's inspiring and motivating. Some might even partially act upon it. They may spend money a bit frivolously in the restored understanding that they can't take it with them when their time on earth is through. In the spirit of nothing ventured, nothing gained, they may take that physical or emotional risk that they've been meaning to but have been too inhibited by earthly fear to try. Embracing carpe diem in concept is powerful and meaningful and it gives us a short burst of euphoria that a truly free life could offer. However, even the overwhelming majority of those who claim to regularly live life to the fullest can't. It isn't sustainable. Unless you're extremely wealthy, there's a problem with living each day like it's your last called tomorrow. One must plan for the future and behave in a manner that will sustain a quality of life under a number of factors that he or she never had any control over like the place that someone's born or the economy and technology of their time. We are all victims and or beneficiaries of circumstance to some degree. I can think of two particularly effective actions we can take in an effort to grapple mortality. One is to understand that life is too short for regrets, and though we can forgive ourselves for failure, it's almost impossible to forgive ourselves for what we were too afraid to attempt. I encourage everyone to pick an arbitrary unit of time that works best for you. Maybe it's once a year, maybe it's once a month, but pick a frequency of time on which you'll promise yourself to do something you don't want to exist only as a what if I would have on your deathbed. For example, that girl you have a crush on, ask her out. Even if she says no, temporary rejection beats the hell out of permanent uncertainty. And if she says no, you'll go on just as many dates with her as you would have by never asking. If you were thinking about trying a new sport, running a half marathon, or climbing a mountain, push that to the top of your list. We have to take those physical leaps while our bodies are still capable of letting us. If you've been meaning to see the Grand Canyon or some other site, make it a point to get that done. There's a reasonable median to be found between absolute carpe diem and absolute drudgery. The second strategy I recommend in the war against death is to preserve the most important parts of ourselves for those who will still occupy the earth when our time is extinguished. This can be done in many ways. Beethoven used music composition, Shakespeare used writing, Hitchcock used film, but you don't have to be one of history's greatest contributors to an art to immortalize yourself in some way, especially not to those who will appreciate your lasting memories most. You are fortunate enough to live in a place and time that enables you to hear these words across an internet connection as a recorded piece of data. The message will likely exist in some form well after I've drawn my last breath. My heartfelt suggestion to anyone listening is to use the power of literacy and or technology to preserve some beautiful part or parts of yourself for the loved ones around you while you still can. Record a video or a series of videos that documents your thoughts, feelings, concerns, and the things that make you feel alive. That when you're gone, those who care for you most will still have that part of you. And those who never met you might still benefit from what you had to offer. If you don't feel comfortable recording it, write it down. Upload it if you do record it to YouTube if you choose to make it public. But say what you can while you can and let the world hear or at least let those who matter most remember it. Post it as a response to this video if you want. Just let that light inside you shine on the rest of the world for as long as the internet can hold it up. You don't have to be a talented animator, a great philosopher, or a famous musician to leave a digital piece of yourself on this planet. You just have to be you, because nobody else can.